Hello everyone and welcome to Nocturnal Horrors. My name is Sean Mazarov and today we're going to talk about a film that's probably a little too art house and a little too obscure for most. It's probably not as obscure as Werner Herzog hypnotizing his actors or that movie made for dogs that may or may not really exist in real life, but we'll see. And while we're on the subject of obscure films, please, in the comments below, let me know what's your favorite obscure film because I'm dying to see it. Today's video is on 2017's The Green Fog, directed by Guy Madden, Evan Johnson, and Galen Johnson. This film is a love letter to Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, as well as a love letter to the city of San Francisco. Honestly, it's like a cinephile's wet dream. Sort of. Kind of. I mean... And it is a real movie, but it's kind of not. I mean, it's a real movie, but it's not. You'll get what I mean. The Green Fog is actually a recreation of Vertigo using archival footage only from films and television shot in San Francisco. Vertigo is about a retired San Francisco cop who follows an old friend's wife becoming increasingly obsessed with her. They take that plot structure of Vertigo and get really, really creative. But honestly, the best way to explain The Green Fog is literally to just show you it side by side with Vertigo. And then it'll all make sense. Good green foggy sense. This is such a fascinating way to give homage to a film as well as a city and what I love about it so much is its legit humor. <laughs> Just wait for the clips of Chuck Norris being Chuck Norris and wonder how can Chuck Norris possibly make you think of Hitchcock's classic? Trust me, it works. It really works. It's the ultimate way a filmmaker can show their extreme appreciation for a movie, a city, a lifestyle, and a mood. For writers, it would be like one of those book collections where a bunch of authors get together and write a bunch of short stories in the same vein as an H.P. Lovecraft or a Ray Bradbury. And in music, it would be like a cover band covering their favorite musician with just a little twist. And speaking of music, the Kronos Quartet does the soundtrack to this one. This film is so much fun to see how they recreate cinematic history actually using cinematic history. Think of the epic title sequence in Vertigo created by Saul Bass, or the dream sequence featuring Jimmy Stewart's hair flowing everywhere. Think of all the epic scenes in Vertigo, and now think of the 10,000 ways you can recreate that using any shot from any film or TV show from San Francisco. God, I just love this idea so much. I bet any movie lover from San Francisco would absolutely love this film, especially if they loved Vertigo. In fact, I wish every city had this. They should have this in like a time capsule. Yes, this film should be in a time capsule. I went there and I want like Martin Scorsese to do the same thing, but for New York, using all the films of New York and picking one specific movie to place the structure around. Give Ben Affleck Massachusetts, or even Mike Flanagan. Give Tim Burton California. No, no, no. Give him just Burbank. No, no, no. Give Catherine Bigelow all of California. Give Spielberg Ohio. Give Tarantino Tennessee. Give Guillermo del Toro all of Mexico. I, th I think this would be such a cool idea. Every single state has their one movie like The Green Fog. I also think this would be an absolute dream job for an editor if they all just came to you with a bunch of footage, but specific movies to choose from, and then you just have a field day recreating everything. You have these iconic images and sequences and montages, and you get to recreate it in any way you want to using a whole pile of movies. I love that. I just think when it comes to editing, you can really let your hair down. You can really get creative. I mean, did I mention Chuck Norris is in this? Yes, I did, but also, 
Check out the way they use Donald Sutherland in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's absolutely mind-blowingly brilliant and wonderful. Look at the way they cut dialogue scenes to match what they're going for. The recreations of iconic Hitchcock sequences are amazing. Editors should love this. This is an art house movie, but it's fun. It's a fun art house film. Look, I get it. I really do. I completely get it. This isn't really a film, but it is. This channel, Nocturnal Horrors, shows a lot of cult classics, not even classics, shows a lot of weird, obscure films that I like to tell you about. I like you to know about these films. I don't always necessarily recommend them, but I want you to at least know about them because when I find out about them, I think it's the coolest thing and I just wanna share that information. This film is one of those movies. I just want you to know about it. I like movies that are just different. I like movies that are just outside the box. I like creativity and I really, really like obscure films apparently. And I think this is an art house film that should be seen, but it should only be seen if you love Vertigo and are obsessed with Hitchcock. If you're obsessed with Hitchcock, if you love Vertigo and double points, if you love San Francisco, this is definitely your movie to see. This is a double feature. You should rewatch Vertigo or see it for the first time and then immediately watch The Green Fog because you wanna have all those little subtle nuances in your brain when you see this movie and it makes it so much better of an experience of watching. Because the thing is, remember, The Green Fog is very, very little dialogue to no dialogue. There's no dialogue explaining things or moving forward in the plot or the characterizations. No, you gotta know Vertigo to know The Green Fog. So double feature it up, okay? This film is currently on the Criterion channel. How they used all those clips from all those archival footage, I have no idea. It is a lawyer's worst nightmare, the legality of getting permission to use all those clips. I have no idea how they did it. They probably didn't, let's be honest. But that's why this film is great, right? Let's just steal a bunch of footage. No, that is not cool. Don't do that, don't do that. I'm sure they got all the legalities taken care of. But don't worry, the filmmakers also did us a huge solid and they actually list all of the films and television shows that they used throughout the film. 98 movies and three television shows in all. That's legit. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And please remember, what is your favorite obscure film? I really, really, really want to know because I want to see all the obscure films I can. I just love them. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.